Hello, church family. Thank you so much for listening to the words of encouragement this whole week. I thought our team did a fantastic job of really just unpacking God's word, uh, exploring the purposes for our life, and giving us some uh, applicable action steps in order to continue to follow that. Uh, today we're going to be diving into 1 Corinthians 10, last chapter in it. Taking a different approach, but still going through God's word and exploring our purpose in life. You know, it, before we start, it reminds me of, of two very simple tools. Two tools that we probably all have. In fact, if we have any tools in our house, we have these tools. We have a hammer and we have a screwdriver. And explain to me why, of all the tools, we can get a ton done with a hammer and a screwdriver. See, I find it funny because the developer of that, the hammer and the screwdriver probably didn't think that it was gonna be used in the ways that it was, but there's nothing more um, satisfying and, and, and works better than when you use a tool for its intended purpose. It works perfectly. It's in harmony, it's in sync, it functions exactly the way that you need it. I think the same is for us. Can we do a lot? Absolutely, we could do a lot. Can we uh, accomplish other things? Can we um, do other things? Yeah, we could do a lot. But what were we made for? I think our purpose in life, what we were created for, you'll find in scriptures, to be glorified to God, to bring Him glory, to put Him on display in how we think and how we act, to glorify him but sometimes as Christians it may seem too simple we simplify too much in just that one sense but I think that in first Corinthians it does the exact same thing chapter 10 verse 31 says so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it all for the glory of God so where did you everything to glorify him and all that we do see I, I love where it continues don't give offense to other Jews or Gentiles or the church of God I tried to please everyone in everything that I do I don't just do it what is best for me but I do what is best for others so that many may be saved and you should imitate me as I imitated Christ I think we look at society today and centuries where people have really tried to explore what is our purpose? Why am I here? What's going to make me happy? Maybe the pursuit of happiness is really the pursuit of destruction in itself. I mean, if you look at our, our celebrities, you know, past and present, who have pursued the, the, the purpose that they felt they had on their life. And at the end, they, they, many of them find themselves with wealth and fame. Um, anything that they would have thought would have fulfilled their purpose or made them happy. And they attest at the end of their lives that they are, are empty and lonely and feel like they've wasted their lives. All for what? But the good news is, as Christians, as followers of Christ, we know that we have one purpose that we're put here, created here. See, we're not our own. I didn't make myself. I know that you didn't make yourself. God created us. He knitted us in our mother's womb. And he created us. He also redeemed us. He bought us. He purchased us with the blood of Christ. And so we are made, we are bought for a purpose. And that's to glorify him in all that we do. That's kind of a challenging just that statement in all that we do is kind of numbing for me because man in everything that I do to glorify God is 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 a purpose that is not simplified that's a task that's a mission that is my goal and it's no longer something that I think I can do all the time it's something that I know that I can't do all the time see I think that brings us to the second set of scriptures that we want to go over it's the, the, Jesus is the true vine in John 15. We'll go to John 15, 5. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 
anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. You may ask anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to the Father. Not just glory to God, but great glory to God. So what is it that brings great glory? The producing of fruit. So the fruit that we have in our lives is what brings God glory. See, the, the, I think the also good news as Christians is that that fruit cannot be produced on, on, on our own. We cannot glorify God on our own. Christ says in here, if you abide in me and I in you. Well, when we're in his word, I think he shows us what we should do and how we should glorify God in that aspect of all that we do. So if you're a parent, apart from God, sometimes our reactions to our kids are not the, the best ones. You know, apart from God, I think we, we make a, a mistake of constantly trying to control behavior and making sure that they're good and well behaved. And we know that, that just behavior alone does not, it's not the end game. It's not going to make us happy or, or fill us with joy. But when we're in scriptures and we're seeking God's wisdom, and we start to parent them and raise them in the ways of the Lord, and we we disciple them, we groom them, we prune them in the way that God prunes us, we start to see them grow into people who love Christ. And that brings us joy. And why does that bring us joy? Because we glorify God in remaining in Him, and Him in us, and producing that fruit. As a spouse, and I know that when we first got married, we married the perfect person. And some time has passed, and I'm sure throughout that, you've discovered that no one's perfect and we all make mistakes and so in those times um, where, where our spouse may seem unlovable and you're apart from God you're gonna act unloving you're gonna act disrespectful you're not going to bring God glory because again we're not remaining in him but when we're seeking God's knowledge and wisdom and we're in his word and he fills us with the Holy Spirit, even in those times when our spouse is unloving, we find ourselves understanding that I'm going to love them because that's God's daughter or that's God's son. And so I'm going to glorify him in how I love my spouse, how I serve my spouse, how I sacrifice for my spouse, not because they deserve it, but because God has called me and asked me to do that. And I want to glorify him. In that, we start to see that that we're not pursuing happiness. We're pursuing the glorification of God. And when we pursue our, our purpose in that, glorifying God, happiness and joy seems to chase you around. So when you pursue happiness alone, it, it, it never ceases to just evade you. You can never grasp it, never have it. But isn't it weird that when we pursue God and His call on our life, happiness and joy just seem to keep finding us. You're in the workplace. We've all had those bosses that <laughs> no one wants to work with. But us as, as Christians, we're, we're called to minister even to that person. To be the ideal employee or teammate. The person who comes in on time, who performs at a higher rate, who, who goes above and beyond, not because of any human or any boss in that thing, but we're working as if we're working for the Lord. And we find joy in what we do because we're glorifying God in our actions, in society, in all of the, the above. If we live in a, in, a, in a way that demands an explanation, if we, if we live in a way that shines bright, that stands out, it demands an explanation from the world because the darkness doesn't understand it. And then when, when, we're, when we're able to explain it, and that explanation is Christ, is God, is the good news of the gospel. God is glorified. When we share the good news, when we go out and understand that we live and at the end we die. And there's two destinations. 
there's heaven and then there's hell. And when that breaks our heart, knowing that many, many will perish, and it prompts us to share the good news, share the gospel, share the glory of God with those around us, God is glorified. See, church family, our purpose can be very specific in your gifts and how God has made you. Um, and I, I encourage you, as, as our staff did, to explore that, to serve, to help, to be a part of our the, the, the Not Avenue body or any, any church body where you can come together and just glorify Him as a body. But outside of that, when things seem to get difficult or hard, or you start to see your reactions to certain situations, remember, are you abiding in Him that He may abide in you in order for you to produce good fruit to glorify God. Because remember, that is our purpose. That is what we're here for, to glorify God in all that we do. So church family, I just want to say thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for uh, traveling this journey this week with our team uh, and pursuing God's purpose for our lives. Hope you have a great day.